So, good evening all. My name's Chris, and this is the first one of the videos I've ever done. So this is for the... I picked this up on eBay about a week ago for about £15, so about $20 or so. Um, now, I'm big into my trading cards. It was when I was a kid. I used to collect all the, um, all the old pro set football league ones from the UK. I've actually got an unboxed and this little box here. So these kind of things here. Now, Americans know what these are. So they're kind of a staple of the everyday life. Um, so I saw this on eBay, thought I'd pick it up for around about £15, and it arrived in the post um, this morning. So a bit of history for you there. So these are from the old World League of American Football that then became NFL Europe, NFL Europa, and then died. So I picked these up, um, like I said, on eBay. So I'm actually going to go through here and... Um, Kind of highlight some more of the uh, interesting cards in here. So it came with, uh, as you can see, uh, full set. So did have to buy additional packs on this. So it came with um, a load of player cards, a uh, bit about each team, a bit about all the helmets, and a bit about the actual season, that, the first season itself. So I think this is actually uh, released as a uh, commemorative set at the end of the season. So let's just get into the box now. So I'll pop that up on there. So. Nice little design of the box, actually. Nice little finger hole there, so you can push the entire pack out. So as you can see here, so let me get my camera in okay. The right way up would be fine. So push those up. And you've got on here, there's a few too many on here, so I'm going to do it by hand here behind the camera. So that's the end of the box there. So what we have here is 150... cards so i'll go through a few of these anyway so let's see what was in here i've had a quick look at these before so i can know what's in the pack anyway so first one card number one nice little cover sheet there which was just the uh, league logo the year this was on and on the back you then got the uh, final season standings and the stats for the uh, 91 season so uh, so it was really set up as kind of a developmental league for the NFL. So you had uh, three European teams that became, I think that expanded to 10 by the end of the league uh, back in the um, early to mid-2000s. And then you had two divisions in North America. So the travel time between games was quite horrendous, um, as you'd see today with the NFL London series. So you see all the um, league leaders, the all-world team there. So few names you might recognise now vaguely, but a few you will never have heard of. So I'm going to go through these now. So I'll pop that down there for you there. Okay, so the first few cards was just a kind of a recap on the league that on the first year. So shot some London Monarchs fans there. Um, just about the fan bases here. So, yep, you get that here. There we go. So just to tell about the actual World Bowl, which is sort of the Super Bowl for this league, end up between London and Barcelona at Wembley, which um, London actually won. So in front of 61,108. It's quite a big crowd by then for those standards at Wembley back in those days. So, okay, so then we go into the... Uh, bit more about the World Bowl, it's, well, a bit more about a couple of the other games as well. So this is actually the, uh, I think this was the um, the first ever game played in the league itself, which was London against the Frankfurt Galaxy. So, and there's a little bit about that on the back as well. So you can see that. So... So yeah, a little bit about the first few games in there. And then, of course, the uh, the actual World Bowl trophy itself as well, which was a glass globe, which I think was paraded into the stadium for the World Bowl on, on between the tusk and elephant. As I seem to remember seeing that on the actual um, vintage footage of this going forward here. So this was the uh, first ever World Bowl. So London kind of a, well, they shut out Barcelona in 21 to 0. 
Um, so it's pretty much a one-sided game, to be honest. And then there's a couple of uh, next few cards, just to kind of uh, shots from the game there. Uh, so yeah, a little bit about the uh, performances there. So it's kind of like a newspaper report in uh, several cards here. So. I'll just scoot over these next few here. So they are pretty much the same again. A bit of photographs from the game. And then a bit about the uh, bit about the game on the uh, back of the card there. So including some of the um I'm not sure where to hold these really because I they've packed a lot of information into these. So you can see there. So yeah, a bit about the actual uh, background of the game now. So then we move on to the next set of cards here. The next, I think it's about 12 of them here. And these are quite nicely put together. So these are, if I can get this in front of here, the actual team helmets uh, overlaid with where the team were based. So you see there, you've got Barcelona, you've got the Birmingham Fire, not the Birmingham, not the UK version, but the Alabama version. Uh, Frankfurt Galaxy, who I think were one of the last remaining teams left in the league when it closed. Of course, our own London Monarchs there. Then you've got the, uh, the North American teams, Montreal, who I don't remember kind of what they did afterwards. I think they just uh, went by the wayside because they were. Montreal's got a very um, storied history in football. So I think the Brands left them in the NFL. The NFL team left the NFL to go to become the Montreal Alouettes, who then became the uh, CFL Packers they are today. The New York, New Jersey Knights, which is a really cool logo, to be fair. Oh, not so cool. The Orlando Thunder. <laughs> Looks like it should be stuck on a map somewhere in front of a TV studio. And you've also got the, uh, I think this is kind of like a, military base the skyhawks that looks to be like a stylized um fly over some planes and then you've then got the uh sacramento surge again logos in those days weren't very aesthetically pleasing and then finally well innuendo alert here the san antonio riders so on the back of these cards they actually just showed you their uh their season results for the base where they played from who the owners and that were who the partners were so San Antonio, co-owned by the Landrys, with their hats. So I think some of these came out of the old USFL, some of these teams. So San Antonio definitely had a side. Uh, New York, New Jersey definitely had a side. The Generals. Uh, yeah, all the other ones. We're kind of like they're put together on the hoop there. So, yeah. So Barcelona play at the Olympic Stadium. In Barcelona, seeing the 92 Olympics, and then London, of course, came out of the uh, Wembley Stadium. Uh, they ended up, ended up playing games all over the UK actually towards the end of their lifespan, which um, they were trying to do for the crowds, but the crowds never really came because they didn't know they didn't really know where the games were going to be played each week. So next bunch of these, the majority of these cards ending up here of the individual players for the teams. So the first three like the rushing leaders, the uh, the various MVPs of the league. So then we go on to including the punting leader, Chris Moore from Montreal. And it just gives you a little bit about their, uh, their stats on the back as well. As you can see, a little bit of a uh, biography about them. And then we then move into the, uh, when we've got through those here, then we move into the um, just the general player cards. So they've categorized them by team. So I'm just going to go through these and just see if I'll pick out any um any ones that uh, kind of remind me of uh, players that are around or anybody famous coming out of the league here. So not many for Barcelona, but there is one here actually. So I had a thing called the Discovery Program, Operation Discovery, which was um Woodward's game program. They tried and picked up local players. So this is one of them for Barcelona, Zisco Marcos. Um, so nice action shot there. On the back, you then got a bit about himself as well again. So, 
played in the uh, apparently played in the uh, Spanish domestic league and won their version of the Super Bowl. So yeah, that sense there's pretty good. He acted as a tour guide for the American players in Barcelona, so he basically was working with the tourist office as well. So and of course no he didn't go to any kind of colleges because there isn't a college system in Spain. I think the only real big U big um, European country that's that is actually um the UK where they've got a whole league. So who else have we got in here then? Oh, I had to bring this one out. The um they also put the head coaches on cards as well. So if you want a nice bad jumper, that's a bad jumper. It's uh, not as good as Dick's Bears one though. That's always the classic bad jumper, the famous one. So they actually um they would have employed all American coaches to be honest. So so yeah, I'll just bring up his um stats there. So So went into um coaching the college system and associated with Boston College had a pretty Average record to be fair, looking at that 59, 55, and 1. Strange to see a 1 on there because uh, we all know that uh, the fans over there don't like draws. But for us, it's kind of like a um, standard thing, really. So, just going back through that one, the Birmingham Fire. Nobody really now I've heard of since. These are quite well put together cards, actually. They've survived all the way since 1991. So, yeah. So they're in quite good condition. Oh yeah, so the next one is this guy. Let's put those on it. We're on to Frankfurt now. It's this guy, Stefan Muslow. So as you probably know, Kickers the world over in America but tend to be foreigners, and this guy has kind of a kind of an interesting backstory to him. So I'm going to do some research on this guy to find out who actually uh, played for. Because there's um, it tells me on here that he played semi-pro football in West Germany in 1984, and also went abroad. So he must have um, competed internationally for Germany or West Germany it was back then. So I'm starting to do a bit of a, a bit of a follow-up on him actually. Get you some information on him now. I can see he actually um, played domestic as well as um, the Spanish guy did. So, yeah, they tended to, the European team tended to come through some domestic teams into the World League when they were skated up. So, let's see what else we've got on here. Ah, here we go. So, the Frankfurt coach in that first couple of years, you might recognise the name Jack Elway. And that, is, that is John Elway's father. I looked him up on Wikipedia just to confirm that, and it actually is the same family. So, it's probably said in the back, actually. Um, I haven't really read the back of these, actually. So, no. So, had a quite, quite a decent um, career in a college game. Uh, Stanford, uh, San Jose State. So, he's won titles with them, and then came over to, the, uh, to Europe, and... Uh, had a pretty good career over here as well. So we're now moving on to the London Monarchs, uh, Britain's team as it was back then. Um, again, nobody really famous in here. Uh, this might, uh, actually, this guy might um, ring a few bells. Victor Abubadiki. Now I've watched some old, um, old footage of um, the World League and uh, British football from the 80s and the 90s and his name seems to pop up quite a lot so um, yeah, he played for the London Ravens which was a domestic team in the UK league from up until 1990 and then played for the Monarchs up until 1998 but never made it across the pond uh, yeah so not much else known about him actually so uh, here we go so there's a bit of information back in here so yeah, another Operation Discovery player. Um, yeah, so there we go. The London Rays of the Budweiser League. Um, the first player in Britain's game more than a thousand rushing yards in a single season. So back then, American football in the UK, back in the mid-90s, that was in the mid-80s, early 90s, was awash with cash. 
and also about 30,000 different leagues starting up and folding after a couple of years. So there was a, so Budweiser came in to sponsor the league, then Coca-Cola came in, I think. So, so you see references to the Coca-Cola Bowl and the Budweiser Bowl in um, the UK domestically. So there's all old video of this on YouTube, which is always good to, uh, to have a watch um, if you want to see some, um, some old style ball being played. That's Victor. So yeah, so there's another famous player who played for London as well. Which was uh this guy. Let's pop those on there. You might recognise the name immediately again, uh, if you're following FL today. Doug Marone. He played centre for the monarchs as you can see there. So and you're thinking is that the same Doug Marone? And you'd be right. He is the Jaguars head coach. Yeah, the Jacksonville Jaguars head coach. The fifth full-time coach in their history. So he obviously, uh, the pathway of many a player who went to coaching, they came through here first. Well, there he is. Oh, a few pies been consumed there, to be fair to him. <laughs> so, yeah, so he had a, um, he had a few games for Miami and New Orleans. Um, and then he went into coaching after he retired. Um, I think he's still at Jacksonville. I'm pretty sure he is. Somebody can always correct me down below. There's one of the uh, comments on here. Yeah. So, yeah, still with him. Um, so does OC at New Orleans. Head coach at Buffalo as well. And then came to them from Syracuse in the college game. So, yeah, quite a storied career. Oh, only played five NFL games in his career, but he's got a 0.451 um, regular season coaching record at the moment, so I'm sure he can pull the Jaguars uh, up the standings this year. Get football, of course, so yeah, so that's one of the uh, famous places come out of the uh, World League. There's a couple left after this, actually, so yeah. So we just then move on to of the American sides here. So the Montreal machine, again, fairly anonymous. Um, fairly anonymous playing squad there. There was one on here, Ricky Johnson. It's not the guy I was thinking of. Um, yeah, it's, these are far too old to be the one I was thinking of, to be fair. Um, yeah, but only ever played for Montreal. Um, yeah, tried to avoid NFL career. But he didn't make it stick. We end up in Canada playing NFL rules. And of course, uh, no league is complete without a Scandinavian kicker, Bjorn Mistmull, who is actually from the kingdom of Sweden. Looks about 12 years old. Played in college, I'm still looking at this here as well. So, and then went to Buffalo soon after this. Uh, so it was issued. So that's pretty, pretty good record actually. Sixty-two field goals in the, the Appalachian State, which I think might be still be a record. I'm not sure. These are nearly thirty years old. These cards. So I would have to check that out later on. So again, the rest of Montreal is fairly um is fairly nondescript here. There's one here actually that I have heard of. Again, is this the guy that I've heard of since? So let's just take a look actually. I think it actually is. Yeah, let me just check on here. Yes, it is actually. So again, um, one of those names that crops up occasionally in videos. Uh, Tracy Simeon, who then went on to play for the Chiefs and the Chargers. And retired in 1999. Yeah, let's see how that copy that. So let's go back onto that. So yeah, made the All World League team, first team. So obviously, um, decent season. Uh, yeah, played at Pittsburgh on development roster. So he was coming through there. But yeah, so he went on to other things as well. Um, so let me see if I can pull up his stats for the NFL actually when he uh, when he left um unfortunately I can't find his stats on here actually the uh, my usual go to site is not working so 
Let's see if we can find them on here, actually. I'm going to play for all reference. Okay, so we played one, two, three, four, five, six seasons in Kansas with the Chiefs. Started most games, actually. So he played, that would be 15, 16 year. Only played eight at San Diego at the, the um, Chargers. So obviously he might have got injured halfway through the season that caused him to retire. So apart from Porty, um, apart from that, I can't find any information about him on the uh, stats here. So I'll, do, I'll just rattle through the rest of these quickly as well. Okay, so again, New Jersey, New York, fairly standard squad of people you've never heard of before or since. Um, there is actually one actually that's going to be, I think he got traded in mid season, that is Eric Wilkerson, who again I've heard of in. NFL terms. Um, yeah, I think he became quite a decent player after he left New Jersey. Um, yeah, only played one year at Pittsburgh before he uh, got traded to the uh, before he left to join the New York Jersey New Jersey Knights. But I have heard of him. Uh, let's see if we can get information on him there. Yeah. Probably another Wilkeson I'm thinking of, maybe. Uh, but yeah, that's a Dapis card there anyway, so hell of a lot of the data available there. So, yeah. That's Eric. So, probably anyone at the New York team I've heard of. Um, yeah, so on to Orlando. Again. These are full of journeyman players you never would have heard of. Um, yeah. That's the problem with the actual league. The, um, the American team stack themselves full of um, kind of journeymen or ones that would never get a shot at the NFL. So let's bring the uh, focus on to that. Okay, so there is one more card in here, I think. And it's probably the best one till last, actually. It's the guy that's probably done the most in his career, well, apart from Doug Marone, after leaving the uh, WALAF. I can see why they changed to NFL Europe. It's a lot easier to actually say. Yeah, so, yeah, the last card I've got on here is this guy. So he was quarterback for San Antonio. I'll just give you the back of the card. You might recognise the face. Yeah, you know who this is. That is our old friend Jason Garrett. Last seen at the Cowboys as a coach. So yeah, so he kind of started his, uh, or kind of ended his um, playing days in this league here. Well, actually, I tell a lie, actually, he went the other way. Started at here, then got, um, went up to Canada for a year, then got drafted by the Cowboys, then went to the Giants, then the Bucks, then the Dolphins. And became a coach, so yeah, um, probably the only Super Bowl winner I've got in the pack here. Actually, <laughs> I don't think Maroon ever won it to be honest. Uh, prove me wrong, uh, but yeah, two Super Bowls, um, as a coach, and yeah, I remember him playing, I remember his hearing his name vaguely on here in the past. Um, so yeah, let me just go through. And, yep, so he is the the uh. Most decorated coach who played in the WALF uh, in this pack, anyway. So I'll just give you a bit of bio there. So, yeah, so QB um, played at Princeton, as you can see there. So, yeah, and then his brother played for one of the other league teams as well. So, because I remember when NFL Europe came about, you had uh, quite a few because it was a developmental league for the. Um, for the NFL Europe how it became, how this morphed into. And you had some quite decent players come through that because it was actually it was a set of a developmental league. Um so yeah, so I remember there were yeah, players like John Kittner, um who else did we have? Scott McCready, uh Vividiki again, um well, the fridge played a few years for London. Um and there were a couple more actually um who was, who was the other one, the major QB who played in that league there? I can't actually remember. Um, it was somebody very famous. Probably going to cut this out anyway, so 
I'm going to do some research actually. Oh, Kurt Warner, that was it. Yeah, Kurt Warner, who played for Amsterdam for a few years. Um, so there were a few players who went to NFL Europe who came back to the NFL and that year did actually make a success of their uh, playing days. Um, yeah, it's going back to the because um, I'm involved in refereeing football in the UK. So I've had still, I think Sean Payton played in the UK at one point in domestic leagues there, or at least coached. Um, let's see if I can find it. It was for one of the Leicester sides, I think. So yeah, I'll have to uh, look that up as well. So uh, let's see if my memory is correct. So going off a tangent here by the way so yeah I'm pretty sure he did play or coach in the UK yeah 1988 he played for Leicester Panthers in the uh, Budweiser League uh, starting QB for them um, yeah scored a TD on their first possession um, and they got as far as the quarterfinals of the uh, league playoffs before leading to the uh, powerhouse that was the London Olympians and then after that, Peyton went back to the USA to get that coaching job um, to launch his uh, Stella career in the NFL. Um, so, yeah, he only played one season in the UK, but we claim him as one of our own. Um, always reference on the um, Sky Sports coverage of London James. So, so in all, that's the quick lowdown of the um, the World League American Football inaugural series card set. So, I might do a few more of these on different sports. I've got a, a stack of um, the... English Soccer Football League from 1990 to 91. So I might go through those later dates. Kind of, um, kind of get this more polished as it were. So if you like what you see there, just leave a comment below. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to do some more content based on this kind of thing. So my name's Chris and uh, thank you for lasting this long. And um, hope you find this as uh, interesting as I have.